When I googled the word minimalism, I was actually kind of surprised at what came up. It said that there are three characteristics of minimalism. Functionality, simplicity, and honesty. And I really got to thinking about what all of those really mean. In today's video, I wanna talk about several very easy, simple ways that you can kind of start inching your way towards a more simplified life. Whether this means you are a minimalist by the end of 2024, or you've just kind of simplified around the house and tried to make things flow a little more smoothly. Step one, this is the very, very first thing that I did when I set about decluttering my own home about four and a half years ago, I made a list of every single area in my home. This is a step I do not think you should skip. Whether you make this list on your phone or it's written out on paper, this is going to be a reference for you and it's really helpful to check things off. It's very motivating. It's a small thing, but it makes a huge difference. Pick two clutter-free zones for your home for the year of 2024. I, what I mean by this is that you're going to set aside these areas as rooms or spots in the house that are not allowed to get and stay cluttered. There are places that are gonna be a little bit more peaceful, more restful, and you're gonna hold yourself and your family accountable to this clutter-free space. So I chose my bedroom. It's still my clutter-free zone. I have kept that the entire time, these several years that I have tried to live more simply, my bedroom has been a clutter-free zone. I also like keeping the entryway a clutter-free zone just because this is the first area that people see when they come over. So I am very diligent and I keep this area dusted and swept and it's just so nice to always know that no matter how crazy the rest of the house is, I have my clutter-free zones. They're retreats and they're also areas in the home where I can just remind remind myself that simplicity is possible and I can remember the feeling that I have in here to motivate me to continue to declutter. Set up a donation bin in absolutely every single room in the house. I, for my bedroom, I like to have one in the closet and really the closets are a great space to keep these. Just have a bin, laundry hampers work, awesome. You'll be amazed at what you can find on Facebook Marketplace too. And just start there, have a donation bin. I feel like clothes get cycled through a lot, especially with kids. So having it in the closet just makes a lot of sense. Let me know if your family's the same. And then as far as the main living area, I like to have one at the top of the basement stairs. So it's tucked away, it's hidden, but I have somewhere, whether it's from the kitchen, the living room, the entryway, I have an area where I can just set a donation. This does not allow you to procrastinate. And I feel like that is one of the biggest hurdles when it comes to living clutter-free or becoming more minimalist is forcing yourself <laughs> to stop procrastinating. It makes it very easy not to procrastinate. When you pick up something that you know you haven't used in forever and you know someone else can use it, you know exactly where it goes. It's obvious, it's easy, and you don't have an excuse anymore. It can feel very overwhelming when you're decluttering and kind of in the thick of it. So one thing I recommend doing is having a basket of some kind for each member of your family. They are in charge of relocating their own items at the end of the night. This takes some of the pressure off of you and starts teaching your family responsibility for their stuff. Ultimately, you're hoping they're gonna wanna declutter their stuff as well. And so this just kind of gets them used to handling their items, being more responsible for them, but it also helps you with clutter around the house, especially while you're busy decluttering. Have a running donation schedule for the entire year of 2024. Have this be probably at the end of every month, you're going to go and take a bag, a box, a car full, whatever it is to the donation center. And this has to be a non-negotiable. You have to get these items out of your house. If you don't have this schedule, if you don't hold yourself accountable to these donation drop-offs, you will talk yourself into keeping stuff. The longer it's with you, the more possessive if you feel of it and the harder it is to let it go. I like to think of being a clutter gatekeeper. This is where I am a 24 seven police. I like to go around and think every time I open a drawer or enter a room, 
I'm going to take a few items out. I used every single moment as an opportunity to declutter. This helped me make faster progress and it kept me again very motivated. You might think this makes you feel just too high strung. This is too stressful. Then set the timer for 20 minutes and in those 20 minutes you are a clutter gatekeeper. Any single drawer or room closet that you enter you are policing that zone and you are looking for things that you can get rid of. I really feel that minimalism is about your possessions, yes, your physical stuff, but I also feel like it is about your perspective, how you view your stuff. So I feel like that is a really helpful thing to realize that minimalism or clutter-free living is really about your mindset alongside your actual physical possessions. Remember that you are in charge, you are the boss, and you get to have the final say in all of these decisions. Do not keep anything for its potential future use when you need to function really well in your home today. If it is an item that you're just not sure about, and I had so many of these kind of trip me up over the years, like, I don't know, I think maybe I could use it. And there we go again with the future potential item. I always say if you're on the fence, it's an automatic no, but if you're not quite ready, to do that, if you're not ready to rip off the Band-Aid and you really are getting hung up on these potential items, I think doing experiments around your house can be very beneficial. I have a whole video dedicated to this. I will link it down below so you can check that out, but honestly, experiments are so cool. Pack up half of something, pack up half your books, half your dishware, half your linens, and you're not actually gonna get rid of it. You're just gonna live with less for a little while and see how you feel and see how you like it. Maybe you remove just one coffee mug per week from your kitchen and try that for a while until you only have a handful and try living with just those few. Also, try removing all like the seasonal dishware from your kitchen, pack it away and save it. See how you feel without it. Challenge yourself to a clutter-free counter one counter has to be completely clutter free like for an entire month. You're not allowed to store the blender there or the toaster or let things pile up in this area. So try an experiment if you're really feeling stuck. Let's go back to the functionality, simplicity, and honesty. If you are absolutely completely at a roadblock and you cannot move forward, ask yourself, does this item function for me? Is it actually working for me in my life? And again, this goes back to nothing's neutral. It's either taking from you or enhancing your life in some way. If the item is not functioning, if it is not serving its purpose today, then it's an absolute no. So see how it's functioning and then see your home as a big operation. What is maybe slowing down the cogs? What's making it harder for the routines in your home to run smoothly? The items that aren't functioning towards <laughs> these routines and making things easier and making things run more smoothly, eliminate them. Similarly, think about whether items are helping to simplify your life. Is this item making it so you have to work less in some way? Does it make it so that your night routine is easier or getting breakfast for the kids in the morning? morning is easier. There are fewer steps and it really contributes to you having less work. And as far as honesty goes, for me, it's at least coming to terms with where I am in my life right now. Being honest about what I can actually do in this phase of life. I right now have a five-year-old, which I love, but I'm limited in some ways. So if I have items around my house that are not really for this phase of life that I'm in, then I can let it go chances are you won't miss it. So letting go of maybe your fantasy self, being really honest about where you are in life, your financial situation, your family situation, what kind of home you have, what kind of space you have, what kind of storage you have. I mean, it really just comes down to facing where you are today and embracing that. So once I feel like you kind of have this honesty with yourself and with your stuff, suddenly your perspective again shifts and you're able to kind of let things go because you're really living intentionally in the moment. I am gonna take you through month by month and help you declutter your home. This is just to get you feeling motivated to give you some things to think about. Thank you for being here. Please subscribe for the rest of the series and I will see you soon. Bye.